Film photography ruled the world for nearly a century, and there was seemingly no end to its immortal reign. But in the 1990s and early 2000s, a profound technological shift was occurring. And even though some people remained unconvinced, all they needed was a little push. Today on Camera Legend is the story of the camera that killed film. Now it can be told. What is going on you awesome and ultimate camera geeks and freaks? Man, I got the camera I got today for you guys is so damn cool. We're just going to have to put this on and we are back today. And today's Camera Legend, man, if, first of all, if you guys live on Camera Legends, if you guys thrive on Camera Legends, if you guys cannot survive without your Camera Legend cameras, don't forget to subscribe to this channel today. All right, because this channel is your source for authentic memories of Camera Legends of yore. And the Camera Legend I got today uh, is a very important camera which has largely been forgotten and don't take that literally guys I mean of course there are people that remember it but I, when, what I mean by that is that in the barrage of digital cameras that came afterwards this camera uh, is largely forgotten as I said you know by the vast majority of people but but not by you hardcore camera geeks of course all right you awesome and ultimate camera legend freaks and geeks just a little disclaimer to prevent the spread of misinformation and also because people take things so literally these days. Just to clarify, in no way am I saying that one camera and one camera alone killed film photography. Okay, that, that would be silly, that would be ridiculous. But as a collective, the Digicams, the DSLRs, digital cameras, you know, from the simplest to the most advanced. That's what brought down the film photography world uh, from its rule at the top. And really the, the natural tide of technological change is really what brought down film photography from the top of its game, okay? But I wholeheartedly believe that this camera, more than any other camera of its time, caused the paradigm shift uh, because when professional photographers started flocking to this camera it gave digital photography credibility and authenticity and this reverberated throughout the whole photography community from pros to amateurs to enthusiasts alike and it signaled the change that sadly killed film from being the ruler of the day. This camera is the camera that I call the camera that killed film. Today's camera is none other than the one and only, the original Canon 1DS. All right, so if you guys don't know this camera, this camera was introduced in 2002. This is the second uh, 35 millimeter full frame digital SLR in the world. Now, as we all know guys, second in this world doesn't count for much, but as we all know, in this case, this camera had a lot more impact than the first uh, 35 millimeter full frame digital SLR. The Contax and digital which uh, many of you guys know, uh, was truly one of my favorite digital cameras of all time. I have a, a video that I'll link up at the end screen for you guys, but the N-Digital did not last too long on the market, many issues with it, and it was pulled from the market. But this camera, uh, actually by all, by all rights, should have been the first, but they were a little late to the gate. So people will always remember the first, all right? But this one, as I said uh, earlier, this one definitely had much more of an impact. And uh, what do I mean when I say that this is the camera that killed film, right? I wrote that in my article. And what I mean by that is, okay, so 
when you go back to the early 2000s, the digital cameras were coming up and by 2002, they were really beginning to make an impact. But believe it or not, film was still at the top of the heap, okay? Now, I bet you, some of you guys are saying, wait, wait a minute, Dweeb, film is still alive, film still thrives, and film is expensive. <laughs> yes, all, all of that is true, but film is also now a niche market. But back in 2002, believe it or not, it was still at the top of the heap, but as I said, digital was rising so rapidly that it just needed a little push, and this camera is the camera that I believe gave that push. A lot of the things I'm going to say in this video are the same way. You have to try to put yourself in that mindset, okay? So, in 2002, uh, the basically what we had uh, as far as uh, high-end cameras were like DSLRs, like the EOS D30, uh, the Dream Megapixel, which, which is actually a great camera too, uh, Fuji S1 Pro, also a great camera, but APS-C, you know, this camera, when it came out, it kind of like, man, it was like a massive uh, tidal wave, I would say, because no one saw it coming, all right? Almost like a, like a tsunami. No one saw it coming. 11.1 uh, megapixels in 2002 and full frame uh, was really like, the, the best way I could describe that feeling is, uh, I, don't, I actually don't, I can't actually cannot describe it, but something close would be like, uh, do you guys remember when you first heard about the Fuji GFX uh, 100 megapixel? And you were like, wow, that's insane, man. And I don't think I could ever afford that. Well, that's the feeling I had when, I, when this camera came out. So when this camera came out, like I said, there was nothing like it. And pro photographers and enthusiast photographers were all gravitating towards this camera, you know, the ones that could afford it. And the rest of us, we kind of had to stay with our, with our D30s, uh, D100s, you know, Fuji S1 Pros, things like that. So uh, it really felt to me like a case of the haves and the have-nots. This was one of the few times that I actually had gear envy, believe it or not. All right, so this one I got a couple of years ago for 80 bucks and I'm gonna keep this one. So let me show you guys some photos from this camera, see what you guys think about it, and I'll come back and give you guys a little bit more detail whether, it's, whether or not it's worth it for you guys and some extra nostalgic bits. This was my, hey look ma, I made it shot. And my way of saying, Lord Almighty, I've been to the mountain top. Now back in the day, I did so many geeky pixel peeping shots that I just feel ridiculous looking at this today. But back then it felt completely necessary. But today I enjoy the beautiful images from the Canon EOS 1DS as is. And believe me, it is just more than as is. It takes beautiful photos with an almost CCD-like vibrancy and clarity. Can it beat your modern 20 to 50 megapixel digital cameras? No, of course not, you gotta be realistic. But I would say that in medium to medium large prints and with a good lens, I think you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between this camera and some modern day cameras. And it is really amazing how beautiful and how usable the images from this camera still are today. Right, and so, my first uh, encounter with this camera was with uh, was in 2005, but in two weeks I sold it. And why did I sell it? Because of image noise in this camera. Okay, now here's the thing about nostalgia. Nostalgia can, can make you see things in, in a different way. Now the reason why noise in this camera bothered me back in 2005 was because uh, we were used to better and better and better image quality from our digital cameras. So when I paid that much and I'm still seeing like a ton of noise, uh, you know, I think I had buyer's remorse. But anyway, what I did was I sold this camera in two weeks and I bought the 5D Classic and I was happy with that, very happy with that. But later on, 
uh, I wanted to give this camera another another chance. So I bought another one in 2012, and then I loved it. Uh, but I ended up having to sell it. All right. So this one I got a couple of years ago for 80 bucks, and I'm gonna keep this one. All right. So for me, uh, and I think for a lot of people, uh, there there were a couple of influences I would call I would call them that really sold me on this camera. Now back in 2002. Uh, I don't think we called these people influencers, but this is a term that uh, definitely applies to them. First person was Fred Miranda. Okay, he runs the FredMiranda.com website. A great photographer. I think landscapes are his thing. And in fact, I think his uh, original 1DS review is still up there. Okay, the second person uh, was a man named Michael Reichman, uh, who had the website Luminous Landscape. Okay, Luminous Landscape was one of the first. Uh, you know digital photography review sites on the internet and I want to give uh, the late great Michael Reichman a lot of credit and a lot of respect because he was an older gentleman I believe he he grew up on film but when digital came around this man was all in okay unlike a lot of his uh, peers his film shooting peers who were hesitant to new technology which a lot of people are but Michael Reichman loved loved that stuff. He was all in, and so he reviewed this camera, and and he was the man who made uh, like a like a comparison of this camera to medium format film. And I remember a lot of people back then thinking, "Oh, this is ridiculous. How can you possibly compare an 11 megapixel camera to medium format film? Because medium format film would probably be like 100 megapixels, right? Uh, but believe it or not, his his uh, comparisons were so compelling that, you know, looking back now, uh, you know, I, I say he was ahead of his time, man, because, uh, you know, I don't know how many megapixels a scanned medium format film is, but, but when you actually look at the side-by-side -side comparison, they look similar. After, after the film has been scanned and everything, they look very similar. So that review, I believe, helped to sell this camera quite a bit all right and okay so is it worth it now nowadays uh, first of all if you guys are looking for this camera the prices uh, are trending from what I have seen uh, around the prices are trending at around 100 to 150 and from uh, for that price hell yeah this is a legend and I totally think it's worth it it's largely believe it or not largely forgotten in today's world and I don't mean that literally because I know you hardcore camera geeks have not forgotten it but to me uh, I love the image quality out of this camera I can I can actually use the noise now to make the images more distinctive more characteristic and in my opinion this camera even though it has a CMOS sensor this camera produces almost CCD like image quality and you know so I think that says more about the CCD versus CMOS thing than anything else because back in those days I don't remember us uh, photo geeks actually worrying so much about CCD versus CMOS it it became more of a thing as as time had gone by more of a nostalgic kind of thing so I think the image quality in this camera has a lot more to do with the Canon color science here and the processing I think that's more important than CCD versus CMOS, to be honest with you. All right. So any camera from today, guys, if I were to be honest, would probably produce better image quality than this camera. But this camera, in my opinion, still has quite a distinctive look that if you know how to use it, you can, you can use it to your advantage. You can make images that look, you know, somewhat different. Just as the same way that some people always rave about the 16 megapixel X-Trans sensor versus the newer sensors. You know, it's, it's what you make of it. There is a distinctive look to that sensor, just like there is a distinctive look to this sensor, and you can use it to your advantage, all right? I hope you guys got something out of this. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and, and subscribe to help me continue to grow this channel. I really appreciate you guys. And until the next Camera Legend, let's take that beautiful 11.1 megapixel, full frame, 2002 era, Canon 1DS, original camera legend shot of you guys at the count of three. One, two, three. And I will catch you guys next time on the cameralegend.com YouTube channel.